podcaster I've actually got show notes <laughs> so um, first up what I would like to do is just um, welcome everybody and um, you can find me on Instagram as Meadowsweet Farm you can find me on Ravelry as capital F capital A capital D capital S and that stands for Fiber Arts Design Studio uh, you can find me on Facebook and you can find me on Etsy as Meadowsweet Farm Fiber Arts Design Studio. So, um, I would like to start off by thanking everybody who participated in the the new to you make along the new to you uh, 2021 MAL, and uh, we ended that February 14th. And we picked, um, well, everybody that was a host picked their choice, and then um, they picked a grand prize winner. And the grand prize winner gets a little gift from all of the hosts. And I think there were like 13 or 14 hosts. So um, that person will receive like, 13 or 14 gifts. Um, and that winner was Carrie Ann Smith. So Carrie Ann, I haven't sent your gift yet because um, I'm still in the process of making you something special. So as soon as I get that finished, I'll put that in the mail to you. And then the woman that I picked, she goes by Ruthie Two Shoes on Instagram. And I picked hers because she made the most beautiful color work hot water bottle cover. Oh my gosh, it was gorgeous. It was like an off-white and red, and it was just, it was so beautiful. So uh, thanks to everybody for participating. I really appreciate it. It was really a lot of fun. Of course, I didn't finish the item that I was working on, but, it's in the works, so it's at least two steps ahead of what it was before this started. So, um, so yeah, so those are the winners. So, yay! <laughs> so, good for you. Um, just a little bit of news um, about what's happening. I'm going to save the sad news for um, the very end of the podcast. Um, but um, it's been bitter cold here and it, we've had quite a bit of snow. I tried to film this last weekend and I'm actually doing it again today. I, I have no idea why, but what I'm doing for some reason is I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking down. And I filmed a whole thing last Sunday and I barely looked at the camera. And the way that I had the camera, all you could see was the top of my head. So. It was a mess, so I thought I'll just wait and do this this week. And I'm glad that I did, because I think this is a little bit more cohesive than what I had last weekend. So, um, but the weather has just been horrendous. 
and we've had snow, we've had ice, we've had a ton of snow. Um, I've been going crazy um, with water buckets and chopping up ice and it's just been, it's been really, really bad. But um, I believe it was this past Tuesday, the temperatures are starting to come up. And when I was driving home from Bluefield, I hit Morgantown, West Virginia, and I looked at the temperature outside it was 66 degrees so yay <laughs> we're finally getting a little bit of warmth so wednesday afternoon when i got back um i walked in the door and i heard this motor noise and i'm like oh no what's going on and it was really cold and my thermostat was set to 70 and it was like 58 degrees in here so I called my trusty furnace guy and he came out he came to the rescue he came the next day and my furnace is we've been here like 27 or 28 years and my furnace is that old so it's an electric furnace and I have a heat pump and it's not the most efficient and i am gonna have to start to think about replacing that i really don't want to do that yet but um the only source of fuel that we can get out here is either propane or the electric and i talked to tim the other day and i i'm kind of thinking i might go with propane um and Tim said that it was um, definitely something to consider. It's, it would keep the house a lot warmer. And um, so we'll see, but I know you really care about that. Um, but anyway, so it's been really cold, um, but now the temperatures are starting to climb and things are starting to melt. There were a couple days that I couldn't get up my driveway. I had to park at the bottom of the driveway and that was fun. So anyway, that's what's been going on. And like I said, I have um, a little bit of sadness that happened here at the farm and I'll share that with you towards the end of, of the podcast. So um, if you don't wanna hear sadness, you don't have to listen <laughs> once we get through the knitting stuff. So um, let's see, um, I wanna say hi to my mom. Hi mom. I had my first vaccination, uh, it's probably been about three weeks ago, and I think I'm due for my next vaccination this week. They send you a uh, something in my email, so I should get a notice when to, to go to the nurse to get the next vaccination. And it really wasn't too bad. Uh, my arm was sore for like a couple days it hurt, but other than that, I didn't have any symptoms or I didn't feel sick or anything like that. Um, so um, I'll get the second shot and I'll be, I'll be all clear. I did have a notice from the health center last week that before I went to campus, I had to get um, tested. So uh, they just did a nasal swab test and I guess I was exposed to someone at some point on campus that uh, tested positive and I tested negative, but I was not allowed on campus until um, I was free and clear. So it was uh, the rapid test and I just sat at the health center for about 15 minutes and they came out and said, you're negative. So back on my merry way. <laughs> so, but I am doing a lot of my classes, especially with my um, online classes, I'm doing Zooms and oh my gosh, they're great. They are amazing. And the, sh the screen share, oh gosh, it's wonderful, which I want to tell you about this because this is so amazing. Things that happen from such tragedy, what really, that's my washing machine <laughs> uh, if you can hear that what um, what has happened is we were forced to use the technology that we've had all this time we've been forced to 
to implement it in ways that we've never done before. And it's, it's just been pretty awesome for me. Um, first of all, I signed up for two classes at Glen's, Glenstone Farms. Um, and this is um, a weaving, it's a fiber art studio in Eastern Pennsylvania. And it's uh, Tom um, Nisley is the, um, um, I guess he and his daughter are running this um, weaving studio. It's weaving, spinning, knitting, felting, it's everything. And he's put a lot of his classes on Zoom. And so I took one class with Kay McGeary, and she is a textile historian. And she's also um, a uh, American coverlet expert. She weaves coverlets and she analyzes coverlets and uh, the fringe and all that. And it was wonderful. It was a, I think it was last, Monday or the Monday before that, it was from seven to nine. It was great, it was wonderful. And so not only are you, you know, just watching and listening to the lecture, but you can participate. You can raise your hand, you can see everybody else, you can see what their questions are. It was great. So this Friday, I signed up for another class at I think it's Redstone Glen, that's the name of it. Um, I didn't write that down in my show notes, sorry. But anyway, this time it was with Tom Niley and he did a um, understanding block weaves uh, with, with um, woven cloth. And it was amazing because he had graph paper, he did his screen share, everybody could see exactly what he was doing, exactly what he was talking about. If you had a question, there there weren't, there was maybe six or seven of us in the class, and it was different than looking at, um, you know, a screen, or he was actually drawing things, which it just made it so much better, so much more, um, it, you were able to understand and follow him rather than looking at him drawing things or it, it just was great. It was great to see that. Um, and it was also nice because it was informal enough that we didn't have to mute. We were all right there. We could spontaneously ask questions. And one of the ladies that was there had her dog in her lap and everybody was getting up and, you know, refreshing their tea or their coffee. And Gabe was right there with me. Um, of course, he had to squeak on his squeaky toy while I, we were, he was, he was kind of bad. <laughs> so I had to take the toy away from him. Um, which he did a couple other things that I'll share with you. We didn't, we were kind, I was not speaking to him for a minute. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, it was great. So, and then I, I also, on Facebook, I've joined a whole bunch of groups and one of them is a historic quilting um, group and they have lectures and they have like weekly things that you can go in and hear a lecture. And there's a couple women that are analyzing um, historic quilts and they're all from different parts of the world and everybody just kind of gets together and they, they, they look at quilts before they have this lecture and then they all come together and they talk about their um, view on, on the coverlet and how it was made and they give their historical um, account for what they look at in the, in the, in the quilt. So there's that. And then um, I also am on Facebook. I've joined the Wooly Thistle Facebook group 
and they had a cast on it's a color work cast on which um, I'm part of that and I'll, I'll show you what I'm making with that but they um, had a color work cast on party and you could only have a hundred people and I didn't get in fast enough so um, so I missed out on that but they um, on the um, Kate Smith from The Last Homely House also has a Facebook group and I joined that and they have craft alongs um, at different times during the week and so it's just a Zoom meet and uh, on the regular, I'm a Patreon of Kate's so they have a private group that meets um, on Saturdays and then they also have one that meets on Friday. So it, this has just been great. And I started, well, I'll, sh I'll share that with you as I go to my um, works in progress. So that's what's been going on in my life. Um, I've been doing a lot of Zooming myself with my courses and I've also been um, watching a lot of Zooms and participating um, with Zooms as well. And the uh, new to you 2021 uh, make along they had a zoom meeting for anybody that wanted to join and so I participated in that a couple Fridays ago so it's just really been fun um, even though we can't get out the beauty of it is is that with my schedule and me driving back and forth the way I do when I'm home I really don't want to get in the car and drive I don't want to go to a hotel and these classes on Zoom, I think we will forever have them because if somebody has a class that normally would be limited to say like 15 people, now we can do Zoom and you can have as many people as you can accommodate on Zoom, which I think is 100. So you get so many more people participating in workshops and classes and it's just so much more economical you know you don't have to drive you don't have to go to a hotel you can sit with your dog and you know participate in these classes so it's it's really been fun and on the one that i participated in the block one on friday there was a woman from um she lives right outside of taswell which isn't far from bluefield state college and she's a weaver so uh it's just really been great really been fun so um okay so the only other thing as far as me goes i know it's me me um, is I'm redecorating uh, my bedroom, my master bedroom in my house. And I think I'm going to go with like an off-white and a red. And so, and I'm going to redo the flooring up on the second floor. So what I really want is, that's carpeted up there now, I really, really want a painted wood floor. And I want it, you know, historically when they would build um, houses and this house is built to look like an 1840s Pennsylvania farmhouse and usually the first floor had the nice hardwood and all the nice trim and nice fireplace mantles and everything but then the second floor had you know a lesser grade of wood on the floor and it that's what I want. I want it to be authentic in that way. So I'm thinking of just, I don't, I don't think it would be pine, but just some kind of lumber that would, um, that I could put down in strips and then, um, either just do some kind of light finish or, um, paint it. I would love to have it painted white. So, um, so that's in the works right now. I just got the paint and I have a stencil that I'm going to use. So I've been looking for some different quilting patterns that I can do, um, to make like a little throw on the bottom of the bed. So, um, so that's what I'm working on there. Okay. Um, so first of all, what I want to share with you and I don't know if any of you do this or whatever, but I use, um, I use patterns that I print off. Like if I get a pattern on Etsy, 
what I did was I had all these patterns and they were all loose and um, you know I just fold them up and stick them in my project bag my plastic bags <laughs> and um, I just decided uh, Karen from Bluefield Yarn Company, when she would give me a pattern, she'd put it in one of these plastic sleeves. So some of my patterns had this and some didn't. But the other thing that I was doing was I wasn't keeping a good record of any of my patterns. And I would not save the yarn, I wouldn't save the ball band, I just, everything was scattered. Or I'd like stick all my stuff in a book and then I couldn't find the book. So, what I'm doing is I'm using these sleeves. I have a great big um, binder, a white binder like this, and I'm using these sleeves and I'm taping the yarn that I use and the ball band. You know, if I'm in a hurry, I can just throw the yarn and the ball band in here. And I put the date as to you know, when I started this, and then I just write on this, or write on the back, or wherever, any notes that I have about the pattern, in case um, I wanna try it again, I'll remember if I came across any glitches or anything. And I'm just really excited about that. So um, I spent last weekend getting all my patterns organized and getting all my projects put together in these little sleeves. Um, and then I, you know, if I'm working, if I have specific yarn for a project, I just put all of that, you know, in my project bag and I have everything all organized. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through um, what I've been working on. Um, as far as my looms go, I'll insert some pictures. What I have going right now on my loom is I have my shawl. It's the avocado shawl and it's in a fingering weight and it's a lace weave. Um, and I'll share uh, pictures of that. Okay, I just wanted to share with you what's on the loom up in the loft on my baby wolf. It's an eight harness loom. I have my warp all ready to weave and this is, um, I believe it's a Wensleydale fingering weight and I dyed, uh, I dyed it with avocado and then the green is from Fleece and Harmony and that's a fingering weight. It might be a lace weight. But anyway, there's the Fleece and Harmony. And here is the Wensleydale Avocado Dye. And I'm going to do a little bit of um, uh, stitching here in the beginning. And then I'm going to alternate tiny strips or stripes with the green and just do a couple rows of alternating the green and the avocado, and then the rest of it will be the avocado, and then I'll end with the stripes again. So that's my plan. Here with you. And the other thing that I don't have on the loom, but I did put on a warp, is for my, um, I'm doing some table runners, and this is gonna be in a um, profile draft. So it's a red and white. It's really, really pretty. So it's a design by, I think, Madeline Vanderhoot designed this weaving project. Okay, I just wanted to show you what I have on my warping board. So it's what's on the loom, what's on the warping board, <laughs> it keeps on rotating. So anyway, this is a 10 over two cotton warp. There are 13 yards on this warping board and I am going to 
probably use a 20 over 2 for my tabby weft and a 3 over 2 in red for the pattern. And once I get this on the loom, I'll share all this with you and I'll explain everything. But for now, um, I am going to finish the Shaw this coming weekend. And then I am going to put this on the loom. And when I get to this point, I'll share with you how I calculate my yardage, how I uh, put all the warping threads on the warping board, and then how I thread the loom and get started weaving. So I will share that with you in an up and coming video, probably the next one I post. But I, I will show you the warp and things like that, but I'm gonna do a separate video and I'm gonna walk you through my process of um, warping the loom from you know designing the warp to all of the steps that I take and then the final step of weaving. So I'll share that with you in an up and coming video. This is my um, stillness shawl. And this is from um, Curious Handmade, um, Helen Stewart. And I am almost done. So I have, um, I have like two more rows of this brown to do, and then I have um, this pink to do and then to bind off and I'm finished. So I'm really loving this. I love the yarn. I absolutely love working on this pattern. I'm up to over 500 stitches, so it is taking me a little bit of time um, and um, to get through one row, but I kind of slowed down a little bit because I didn't. I was having so much fun with it. I didn't want to stop knitting. So, um, so yeah, I I'm uh, really enjoying this. This was really fun. So I was at a craft show in Withful, Virginia, a um, couple. Well, not this past summer, but the summer before that. It was a lady that she upcycled a sweater and turned it into a bag. Um, so I just love this. I just think it turned out really sweet. So it, I think it has, it has two pockets, one on each side, and she, ha she raises sheep and um, she just added some little edges. I just, I love this. I just think it turned out, it's just so pretty. Love the colors. So she said she found this in a thrift shop and um, it was too small. She couldn't wear it. So she felted it and turned it into this bag. <laughs> so I really like it. So, um, okay, so this is the vanilla sweater, and this is a pattern um, designed by Kareen from the Wooly Thistle. And this is a raglan, and it's a top down. Let me turn this around. Um, and I'm really enjoying this a lot. And, um, I had some questions when I first started this, um, and this is yarn that I purchased from the Wooly Thistle, and it's, uh, it's Rama, Funnel Rama, and it's color 487, okay? I, that's true. That's really true to color. Um, it takes six balls, but, and these are, um, I think they're 50 gram. And it's 100% wool. Uh, pretty 
pretty sure they're 50 gram. Yes, 50 gram, 50 gram. Um, but I ordered an extra one. I noticed um, that a lot of people, their sleeves were um, shorter and I like my sleeves really long. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, um, when I was starting out, I, I got kind of confused about placement and increases to do the um, uh, raglan area. And there was somebody on, there was a gal, Karen, hi Karen, <laughs> on Facebook, on the Wooly Thistle Facebook page, and she posted a picture of her vanilla sweater that's done in this gorgeous red. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And so um, she had it, it was hanging from a tree and the snow was in the background with this beautiful red, red yarn. And it's the Rama um, from the Wooly Thistle. And so I um, asked her a couple questions because I was confused. And she came right back and then the next day I had a couple more questions and she came back and she answered my questions. And so I made a new friend on Facebook through the Wooly Thistle and I just think, you know, this has just been nice. So um, we check in with each other once or twice a week and it's, it's really nice. So we keep up on what we're doing project wise. So thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, so these are the two things that I'm working on. My um, project that I'm doing for, um, for the Wooly Thistle color work is um, And I started this, I took a class and started it and didn't finish it. So it's, uh, these are fingerless mitts, Lobby and fingerless mitts. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And I have worked on these even after I said I was casting on. So it's the same as they were when I first started um, but hopefully it'll give me incentive I've just been doing the vanilla sweater and trying to get that finished I even put my um, uh, saintly stillness shawl that I absolutely adore I put that down to work on the vanilla sweater so um, but anyway so I, I will pick this up so the only other thing that I have so there's two things. I have a brioche cow that I started a couple years ago. I'm not going to even show you that. And then the other thing is um, um, the half and half triangle wrap, which I haven't started that yet. So these are the things that I'm going to be working on. Acquisitions. Okay, so um, I saw this book on the internet. I haven't started it yet. The Fabric of Civilization, How Textiles Made the World. So um, I'm really, you know me with my history and textiles. Um, the story of humanity is the story of textiles. As old as civilization itself, since the first thread was spun, the need for textiles has driven technology, business, politics, and culture. So. This I'm gonna start reading. I'm up for tenure um, and all of my paperwork is due the 1st of April. So that's kind of consuming me at the moment. Plus I'm on a couple committees. Uh, and so I, I, the only sanity that I have <laughs> is my knitting. So as soon as I have a little bit of spare time, I, um, I work on that. So this will probably be after I get all my schoolwork stuff done. Um, this book I bought, um, I'm really 
wanting to do some designs on my own. And I did them on the knitting machine years ago, but I really wanna to try to do some knitted stitches and you know maybe follow a pattern, but add some of my own design elements. So this is just like, I could just sit and look at this book forever. So I'll be practicing my stitches here. Um, this is a book that was recommended by Corrine from the Wooly Thistle. And this is Top Down Sweater Design. She is amazing. This book, if you wanna do your own designs, this book you have to have and add to your library. She takes you through I mean, even if you look at a sweater and you're working on a pattern that you purchased and you're like, wow, my body doesn't fit this sweater, it tells you how to make those alterations. You just follow along. And this, let me see if I can find it, is something I'm definitely going to do. Um... So rather than doing a yoke, I want to do my own designs here too. And there is a um, there's a computer program that you can actually do your own designs. I think it might be for embroidery or cross stitch, and you can do it for color work too. But rather than doing a yoke. You can do this and just do two little front panels. You don't even have to do the back. So this book is just such a great book to have. It's really, really amazing. And I'm really looking forward to practicing and learning from this book. Um, I want to see what other books that Ann Bud has. It's Ann Bud is the author. And I've heard so many wonderful things about her. I've seen some videos on um, the um, um, somebody just sent me a text. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, I've seen a lot of videos like Fruity Knitting. I think they had her on. Um, and the Grocery Girls have talked about her. So um, acquisitions. This is why I was upset with Gabe. This is Emma's yarn and it's September 2020 and September is my birthday and I bought this to make myself something for my birthday and I was in the process of trying to find, it has like a tiny little speckle of red in there and um, I was trying, I was going to do a shawl and I was going to have like this, the top part, and then a lace bottom in this red. And he chewed like a hunk of it straight through. So I think I can save it. I have it in a circle like this and I pulled out most of the threads that he chewed. So now I'm just I'll get it untangled. It's just going to take me a while. But this is all the pieces that are tied together. I looked on the internet to see if I could find some more of this, and I haven't been able to. So if anybody finds the September 2020 Emma Sock Yarn, please let me know. <laughs> ASAP. So then I, I'll still untangle this, but I just don't have very good luck with um, with this in knitting. You know, you have to keep breaking and breaking. So, um, but anyway, um, so, okay. Um, I stopped at the Bluefield Yarn Company. It's a dangerous place, very dangerous. Um, but I got this, I'm making Steven some socks and, um, 
this comes with the directions on how to measure, but I think this might be a really good thing for me because rather than, you know, once I get his measurements, then I can, I can work on this. So, um, okay, so yarn. I have fallen in love. Oh, he also chewed this. He didn't do it quite as bad. Um, it was kind of messed up, but this he got a hold of as well. Um, but this is Emma's yarn, and um, this is called it's a sock yarn, and it's eighty percent merino and twenty percent nylon. And this is called Once Upon a Time. So I just bought these because I love the colors, um, and I. Um, um, I love the yarn. It's got so much twist definition and the colors are gorgeous and I love, love, love the story. Um, she, uh, her parents own, Emma is I, all of, I'm not sure how old she is, but I saw a video of her and she doesn't look over 18 years old, but she was doing a science project. Her mom and dad own a yarn shop and uh, she just started dyeing yarn and people started buying it. And when her sister graduated from college, her sister jumped in and the two of them have this yarn business going. So um, this one is called Mexican Wedding Dress. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but I, I went crazy one day. Um, they have a mystery knit along for a shawl and it starts, I think it starts in April, and these are singles, and it's, um, I think this is called, this is the Once Upon a Time. Let me see what weight this is. Um, she's, she's from Florida, too. This is 400 yards. It's 100% superwash, and these are singles, and this one's called Yellow Submarine, and this is called Denim. So these were the colors that they gave me, and I am waiting to get my clues. So there's that. Um, I know, I went crazy. Um, I'm gonna do the whole collection. She also has a yarn of the month. I'm gonna get everything in sock yarn, sock weight. This is the January 21, and I got the February. Um, and there's the February. So, aren't they gorgeous? Um, and then, let's see, I got this. And this is called Weather Vane, which I, I just love those colors. So I do have things in mind for this. And this one is my favorite because it, it's me, plant lady. <laughs> I love that. It's so pretty. Um, let's see. And this one, um, I got this one, Drops of Juniper, because I thought those two would look good together. Um, Oh, 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 oh. The only other thing is I placed an order. I love watching uh, Cabin Boy Knits, and he just launched his website um, about two weeks ago. So I just had to buy, he does hand-dyed yarn, and I just had to buy his bag. Look how big that is. That's ginormous. So I finally got a big project bag for myself. And um, I got this, this is a uh, merino and it's a worsted and um, it's a greenish blue. It's been dyed in indigo. And this has been dyed with cannabis leaves. <laughs> so I thought I had to, 
I had to buy that. Okay, and then this one, I, I just absolutely love this color. This is a DK Merino, and he dyed this with white spruce. And I have all the pine trees on my farm, so I was really excited to, um, to get that. So that's all as far as my acquisitions. Oh my God, there's so much yarn here, I can't believe it. I normally don't buy yarn like this, but I just couldn't help it. I love Emma's yarn and I really, I just love Cabin Boy Knits. I just love those guys. Okay, um, so that's it. And then um, I will share with you um, my, my story of what happened this week. Um, so I have three horses and um, all three are rescue and they all came pretty close to around the same time. So they've been here, um, I think it's going on about 13 years or so. And I have Beatrice, who is a black and white paint. And when she came here to the farm, she was skin and bone. Um, and I can't be sure, I can't say that she was abused, but she certainly um, was very fearful. Um, she was very afraid of men and um, she was literally skin and bones. So now she will do anything she can to sit in your lap. She is a sweetheart. When I first got her, she would literally run. She was wild, running along my fence line, screaming, and she just, um, she bit me in the shoulder. <laughs> uh, she was crazy. Um, but now she is just a love bug and, um, Esperado came here, a friend of mine um, uh, was, I guess, you know, getting different horses and she decided to um, uh, give Esperado up. He's a, a paint, or I'm sorry, he's a Pasifino and he's a sweetheart too and he always has been. He's just a really great horse and out in the field when you see him running, sometimes he gets his little gait and he just looks like a little toy horse running in the field. He's really sweet. Um, and then uh, the very first horse, I got a phone call years ago from a riding stable and they had a lesson horse, a mare that was really getting old and they just didn't feel right having her day after day give lessons to children and people who were learning how to ride. And they just wanted to see her go to a good home, a retirement home, you know, where someone wasn't going to ride all that much. And, you know, she could just have green grass and pastures. Well, um, Beatrice is actually probably more on the overweight side. Esperado never changes. His weight stays the same. But Beauty, over the years, she... Um, she is thir was 39 years old, and uh, that is really, really old for a horse. When I got her, she was like 20. Sorry, somebody just called me and <laughs> knocked my phone out. Um, so anyway, um, when I got her, she was like 27 or so. And um, over the last three years, what... I started noticing was um, towards the end of the winter, um, she would start to drop in weight. Okay, another phone call. <laughs> um, so over the summer, she would plump right back up again. Um, she always had energy, she always had spunk, um, but she's old, you know, she was old. And um, so, um, over the last couple weeks, um, I noticed that she was just slowing down quite a bit. And um, it's always in the back. My horses and my animals are, you know, like children. They're like my kids. They're always 
they're always here you know i'm always thinking what do i have to do next for them you know you just do they're a part of your life and you you know take on this responsibility to care for these animals and um you know i don't take it lightly i'm you know i'm a very protective <laughs> um parent when it comes to horses and kids and um so i came home on wednesday evening and uh, I always go up into the barn and check on the horses and they were all, they have a great big round ring um, that um, is always in front of them. And they were all standing up there and everybody was happy. It was really windy. And um, then um, Thursday morning, I went up to feed and normally when I uh, even open up the door to go to the barn beauty is always calling and she's nickering or giving me some sign and um, I didn't hear that and um, so I went up in the barn and she was laying I had a just a big kind of area filled with hay and um, she was looked like she just laid down and just peacefully um, passed away. So um, it was a pretty traumatic um, event. Um, you know, I've had her for uh, quite some time and um, I knew that I knew that her time was coming close. I knew every day I knew I would go up there and just almost hold my breath and then I'd hear her calling me and I knew everything was okay. Um, so it wasn't a surprise, um, and she did have, you know, a beautiful life here. She was not asked to ride, um, she grazed in great pasture, she had hay in front of her, she had treats, she was very well taken care of, um, but it still leaves that hole in your heart, um, and I, I miss her, um, so um, uh, I promised her when she came here to the farm that she would always have a home here. And so I buried her in the pasture under her favorite tree. And she is the matriarch of this farm, of those pastures. Um, and she still has her home here, um, an eternal home here on this farm. So um, I know it's a part of owning animals that you have to accept um, this kind of thing, but it still doesn't help. <laughs> so, um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so, um, well, I think this is it. I hate to end on a sad note. Um, I've got to try to see if I can... <laughs> untangle this um, and I hope you all are well I hope you have a great week coming up and um, probably the next video I'll do is one um, of me showing you some some weaving techniques and some things that I'm working on on the looms so um, I hope everybody is safe and happy and warm and um, Bye for now. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.